Rest in peace to Jerry Springer, who just passed yesterday. You know, talk about a man who lived a life. Like, a lot of people don't know this, and um, I didn't even know this for a long time, but, you know, Jerry kind of got his start off in politics. And then I believe he was the... I know he was in the council for Cincinnati, I think. But, um, you know, he got into, you know, broadcast television. I think he was a reporter. And then, you know, the Jerry Strange role, which I didn't also know was, you know, lasted for about 30 years. Because I remember watching Jerry Springer as a kid. You know, just remember, I forgot how old I was, but... The, um, you know, I just remember it being, you know, what the fights, like before, I, before Maury, um, and I could be wrong about this, before Maury, there, there was, you know, Jerry Springer, you know, like, you know, Jerry Springer used to always, you know, have guests on this show. And I believe D. Ray Davis and Corey Holcomb actually was guests up there. You know, they was messing with like some chick and I don't know if they was, I don't know if it was set up or not, but it was, it was entertaining. It was like the first reality show. Like, if you really think about it, like, the first reality show, because for those of you who who is familiar with Jerry Springer and familiar with, you know, the movie The Ringmaster, starring Jerry Springer, Michael J. White, Jamie Presley, um, you would know kind of, like, how that was set up. Because one thing that I will say about Jerry Springer was, again, you know, this is kind of like how Steve Wilkos kind of got known, but, you know, Jerry won't no pushover, but he was one of them guys like, you know, he had races up there. He had trans up there and they used to fight all the time. And that was the thing that I, you know, that I used to like, you know, ironically, cause you know, being like a wrestling fan and, you know, kind of growing up in a household where, you know, my mama, you know, used to watch soap operas and I used to watch wrestling. And I think even like my dad was sports, you know, it was like, that was a mixture of everything. You know, some people call it like trash t- television, but that was like the first reality show. So I think it was one of those things that was always kind of like embedded in me, just kind of like as far as the entertainment, you know, like this is what talk shows are. You know, you know, you had the um, Jenny Jones, the Ricky Lakes, Montel um, Williams, Oprah's and all that. And then, you know, you had Jerry Springer, which I believe, I think that was probably the only show I remember ha- actually allowing, you know, those hands to fly, you know, those titties to fly so i just want to you know send my condolences to you know his family you know 79 you know it's, it was on it was i can only be lucky if i can make it there because again jerry springer was a household name and you know You know, I don't really know too much as far as like what happened after that, but I just did want to take this moment to, you know, give my appreciation to Jerry Springer. You know, moving forward. You know, it just allows me to also, like, look at just how a lot of our heroes, a lot of those people that we inspire to, you know, that inspires us and inspire and inspire to be like are, you know, passing away. You know, we had, you know, guys like DMX who it still seems kind of wild, like, you know, still can't believe he's, you know, he's gone. You know, you got Jason David Frank, who was one of those guys in martial arts. He was kind of like, uh, to me, he was like our Mr. Miyagi. You know, for the, like, because again, you know, we have, you know, the Karate Kid and stuff, but like, Jason David Frank, who was, you know, I always look at him as like one of the original Power Rangers. Even though he came on later in the season, he was the original. Like, you know, he's been through a lot 
of seasons with Power Rangers. And it was and it hasn't even been a year yet since his passing. You know, he was forty nine. But he was someone who was still kinda like doing like he kinda still held on to that legacy. Even though he was the like I think the white dragon, you know, he stayed in that martial arts realm. And even though I haven't seen the Power Rangers movie yet, new Power Rangers movie yet, you know, I heard great things about it. You know, I just it's kind of it's kind of crazy. Like for those of you who just started listening, you know, I'm just a kid from Hand and Rose, Virginia, who used to just love a lot of things. I was into a lot of things. You know, I was into Power Rangers. I was into wrestling. Um, even though I wasn't supposed to, I like, like, you know, I like Jerry Springer. Um, you know, rapping, Michael Jackson, you know, Candyman, like a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of things that I, a lot of shows and people that I grew up on. You know, as I see, like we, as I see them now, it's like, man, you know, it's it always inspires me because it's like when I was younger, you know, it's it's kind of like they still see people active. You know, a lot of people fall off, but it's still like seeing certain people still doing what they've been doing for twenty some plus years, and to still be relevant and still be pushing the envelope. Like the Jerry Springers, like the Jason David Franks. And to see just the love and the respect that they get from their peers and from the fans, it just allows me to think that, hey, keep going. Because I always want to also want to inspire those who are listening. Like if you have a dream, you know, even if you have an idea. You know, the biggest thing to remember is take your time. Don't waste your time. Because, you know, I was actually, I actually went out of town today. And I had a great conversation with someone and, you know, just the admirations, the, the, the motivation that people have, like to know, be entrepreneurs, just to do what they love is inspiration for me. Because for me, like, again, I'm introverted and I can be out of or what they call ambivert. But sometimes for me, I just, I don't like, I don't want to be a boss. I just want to own. I want to be able to manage, but I don't like, I'm, I'm not like, I'm not one of those people that can like, I don't really want to be telling people what to do. Like I'm a father. I got like my own responsibilities to a young person. And I have to raise him up. And even like with, you know, the other children in my life, the stepdaughter, the, you know, goddaughter, and, you know, even like my little nephews, cousins, nieces, like I, I want to see the next generation be able to do what they inspire to do without struggle. In a perfect world, I could be reaching, but to me, I believe that for us, for those of my generation who was growing up in the 90s, in the 80s or whatnot, that we work hard and like, you know, we on that borderline. I always mention this all the time because before, you know, while Jerry Springer and Power Rangers and all these different video music video um shows 
while all this was going and striving, we didn't have the like we didn't even have the internet. We didn't have social media. So the most the one thing that we always just have was word of mouth. Like I said, I was mentioning like growing up, you know, watching Jerry Spring. I remember going, you know, going to school, you know, <laughs> like middle school, high school. Like say you see the uh that last episode you seen Jerry Springer yesterday. Hey, I gotta go home to go watch Jerry Springer. You know, more even more sometimes. Like uh, and then now you know we have we have these reality shows, which is kind of like I always say it might be like a spinoff of that because now and it's like they're fighting. You know, this is clearly broken, but it's a production. You know, everything's a production now. Everything's monetized now, and it's like hey, like everybody can do it, but not everybody can do it successfully. But I also still encourage people to at least do something that they enjoy doing, that they love. Because everything, like, life isn't promised. Tomorrow isn't promised. Like, you can be 79 years old, 49 years old, 19 years old, or even 9 years old. But, like, if you are capable of ha- of actually trying, if you're capable Of taking the opportunity, taking the chance, no risk, no reward. But it's like one of these things where, you know, when I hear about hear about someone dying, whether they're in their home, whether they're in their hotel, it it makes me wonder. Like, and I and I say this before, like, man, you know, I got to stop playing because. Even though I still have some time on me, it's like I we don't like I'm just grateful that God has blessed me to see another day and to be able to enjoy these gifts that these celebrities and that these public figures had been able to share with us and be a part of my childhood. Because like I was mentioning, like there are certain things like me as a as a underage minor or adolescent you know child you know there are certain things that i grew up watching and listening to that i had no business growing up watching and listening to and jerry springer was one of those things like there like there were certain things up there like but that was not that was no like the talk this talk shows that was on back then you know what even though it was it would be helpful now i had no business watching that you know i, I was saying this earlier like I never even got a chance to get any Jerry Beads. But I remember the Ringmaster at one point in time was one of my favorite show movies. You know, because it was kind of like, you know, it was... It was kind of like the Jerry Springer movie where, like, this is how things actually is with the shows. Like, you come, you know, you we call you in, you, you might call the show to be a guest, and then we call you, you get flew out, or you fly out, and then you let whatever happens. And it's, and it's, and it's the crazy thing because I remember on that movie, like Michael J. White was sleeping with his girl's friend, right? So that's why they went on the show and they ended up getting into it because Michael J. White, he was like, he was like, I don't want to say the first, but he like, just from my recollection, he was like the first, might've been the first guy character where i seen that on television like oh you though that's a that's a that's a real thing like when they talked about code like and you see when my man you know we supposed to be friends and then he goes off and he ends up you know running into jamie preston who was also up there with her boyfriend and his and her mom or even like i well not even well not even her mom but she like both of them was in a relationship and they sleeping around too but it's just kind of wild because it's like Drama always kind of been the entertainment. And then sometimes drama is somebody else's trauma. But, you know, it's entertaining. I think the one thing that uh, people don't want to admit is that sometimes when we see other people going through things, it puts us at peace because it allows us to take our minds off of what we got going on. Not saying that it's right, but that's the truth. I've been, I'll be honest, I've been like that. 
You know, I never tried to guilt anyone from, you know, having their issues and being in their business and say, hey, you did this too. But it's like, it could be a breath of fresh air when you look at these shows and just see just how messed up people's lives can be. And then you gotta and then you get humble and be like, man, you know what? I'm not doing as bad as them. And that's and I think that's the and I think that's the message. I think that's really what what you can like kind of look on look at and say like, hey, it can always be worse. Because like I say, like I never would wanna put any of my loved ones on front street and just kind of like for a personal gain. Like if I'm having, you know, issues with you and if I'm having some relationship issues, trouble in paradise, I would never try to put that on screen for people to judge it. I mean, and that's something common now, you know, we be, we be on social media all the time talking about all our business and then be mad when people speculate and assume. Rest in peace, Jerry Springer, though, because, like I said, he was definitely um one of those one of a, a, a pioneer. Because even though, like again, I can't say that it was it it was scripted. I can't say that it wasn't, but it was definitely entertaining. So you know, bottom line point is, you know, take care of yourself and each other. All right, because things can be worse. You know, do your best to elevate yourself. You know, if you're not happy somewhere, you know, you got you got to take control of your own life. You know, God is in control, but you have to be able to, like, if God is going to be the driver, you got, like, you can't, like, you got to be the passenger. You can't let nobody else be the passenger of the life. But I always say, I always say, you know, Jesus, take the wheel. But you make sure you got to study it. Because God is not that God can't do things. He can do all things. But it's also our job to make sure that we keep that afloat, keep that balance. You know, God doesn't, God doesn't want us to be lazy. He doesn't want us to be depending on you know him for every single thing because it's like God's going to help who helps you. God is going to help who helps others. God is going to help who help themselves. So that's like, that's one of, that's the segue. You know, it's, you know, it's almost wild. Like, I tell this story every time, like when I remember when I heard Michael Jackson pass, I was at work. You know, I can't believe how long it's been. I think it's been like over two, it's been over 10 years now since Michael Jackson left. It's still hard to believe. And that's kind of like why, that's one thing I will say good about social media and, and then now because those things that we weren't, those, those things we wasn't able to witness and see and remember when it was happening, there is some stuff that you will be able to remember, like you, that will recollect to you in your mind on, like you can go on YouTube, you like, you can go on Netflix, they'll rekindle certain things. So it's like, to me, to me, I always, always take heed and be grateful for the lessons, good or bad that I've learned and you know just the fact of hearing about you know Jerry passing away a lot of memories came back like like I said I don't I don't remember I think I don't know if I was in middle school when I started looking at him or not but he was on definitely on air longer than I thought but it was just that was such a great show yo like I don't I'm not sure I know they got talk shows now but I, I don't I don't know like I said, love like they got those reality shows now, like Love and Hip Hop and everything now. Like and because before that they didn't really have those reality TV. Like I said, Jared, to me, like outside of wrestling and WWE, WF, WCW and all that, Jerry Springer 
was like a reality TV show, but it was just a talk show. I couldn't wait to see a fight. And I think that's probably why I never really got into boxing like that because I used to always be into wrestling and I used to always watch Jerry Springer. People was actually fighting. They used to let them fly sometimes. I think after a while, they had stopped letting them fight. But they would fight for a little bit. They really could have made a game out of that. Because, you know, like now they got those talk show, like they got those games, like Family Feud games. And, I mean, they had Jeopardy and everything. But, I mean, like imagine, imagine now. You know, imagine Steve Harvey having shows where people can get on and, like, you know, it was like hockey. Like you fighting. Like you can be able to fight and, like, sometimes, you know, duke it out. You know, kind of almost like celebrity death match where they got the celebrity boxing, but it's like celebrity death match where these these um dream matchups is happening is to the death. But it's like, man, I remember my cousin just sent me this link when there was a Nazi. He, you know, he got on Jerry Springer and he had said something about his mama and Jerry stepped to him like he won't no push over. And it was like, man, I don't rem- I didn't remember that, but it was just kind of funny to see. Cause I'm like, look, he ain't like you ain't just going to come on my show and. Like, disrespect me. That, like I said, because back then, like, that was, like, a big thing. Like, talking about somebody's mama. You know, this is, like, even before, you know, the the um, MTV show, Yo Mama. And people talking about putting the, the chip on your shoulder and tech, knocking it off. Like, you couldn't talk you couldn't talk about nobody's mama back then. Like, y'all, those was actually fighting words for real. And then I think even now, like, even, like, certain people, like, I think it's more so, you know, I think now it's more or less threatening, but. You know, it was just kind of great, toxic but great, and that's and that's the and that was the beauty of entertainment back then. Is like, you know, we didn't really have to worry too much about certain things. I mean, we got to pay like we got to pay for it now. You know, with our mental health and everything. But it's like now, when you look back on it, it's like man. This, this it was almost kind of like therapy, you know. They had they had people come up there and talk about what was going on because don't get a twist. Even though it was a lot of drama and fights up there, there was some stuff up there. Like I said, more like more was kind of like the the counterpart. You know, he had like therapists and there'd be like investigators, a lot of type of tests and stuff up there. But like Jerry Springer, like he had like all he had all type of guests up there. You know what I'm saying? Some people used to look at him as Jesus, but um, really it was just you know I just wanted like I said take that time to really appreciate, you know, part of my childhood, you know, because like I said, things are different now, but as, as always, you know, stay safe, stay positive, productive and positive. This is Blair. I'm gone. Come on.